A mountain goat tag in Oregon is something that's almost unheard of. With less than 30 being given out any given year, it's something that most hunters just dream about being able to accomplish someday, but never actually expecting it to happen. I remember hearing stories and seeing pictures as I was a little kid, just being in awe at how beautiful it was. They always seemed to be hunting in some far away, beautiful alpine ridge that I'd most likely never step foot on and never have a reason to go up, and just thought it was the most beautiful place that I've ever seen. While it always seemed far out of reach, it weighed on my mind that it was definitely something that I would like to accomplish someday. Something about the ruggedness and the wild allure of it just always seemed to have my attention. The fact that I could see something that most people would never be able to see, and experience emotions that most people would never feel, just made me want to do it even more. My name is Ruger Erickson, and I drew a 2023 mountain goat tag in the Eagle Caps of Oregon. All right, folks, it's October 1st. We got to the trailhead last night at like 11 o'clock. Slept in the truck. Pack team should be here very shortly. We're getting all the horses and stuff ready. I'm gonna hit the trail and go ahead and try and get to base camp tonight. Hopefully do some glassing tonight if we get set up in time, so let's go. To start our trip off, we had about a six mile horseback ride to our base camp. We started low in the bottom of the canyon, but slowly climbed our way out and hit the snow level, which then took us to the alpine level. After three long, hard hours of riding, we eventually made it to our base camp, which we were rewarded with a lot of fog. That was pretty cool, huh? Dude, that was wild. That was one of the crazier things I've experienced on hunt, but now, no packers, we got a mule and a horse and four dudes and we're ready to go kill a goat up here, man. There's nothing up here but us and a whole lot of opportunity and we're about to take full advantage of it. All right, folks, we got camp set up. Uh, we're ready to roll for tomorrow. Basically, the plan for the rest of the day is we're gonna get some more firewood, get it drying out, because everything up here is soaking wet. Right now, it's really fogged in because we're the cloud level's pretty low. I think cloud level's like 75,000 right now, and we're at about 82. I mean, we can see 400 yards max, and that's if we get like a little opening. Uh, hopefully, it lifts a little bit tomorrow morning. Not looking the greatest, but it's supposed to start lifting Tuesday, so we should be in business. But for now, we're just gonna kind of get ready for tomorrow, and. Enjoy some time up here, enjoy the warmth of the wood stove and the wall tent and just hang out, see what we can do. <laughs> I, I see it. The first morning of our hunt, we awoke to a thick layer of fog. While this didn't make for great glassing conditions, we didn't want to waste the day, so we slowly made our way up the ridge behind camp and worked our way to a glassing spot anyways. Pretty good. Once this fog clears out, we're gonna be in for uh, probably a couple hours of glassing for sure. If it follows the trend it has been, we should be getting into patchy clouds by the end of the day. So. Well, 
we're finding them, kinda. We're in the process of finding them. We've seen two goats today, but both were gone before we even saw, got a chance to think about it, so. While one of the goats that we spotted was a decent billy, due to worsening visibility and limited time, we weren't able to make a move on him. He was in a very good spot to hunt him though, so we decided to keep him in the back of our minds, and we deemed him Big Honcho. It's starting to get nasty. Looks like some storms are rolling in again. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and boogie on back, do some glassing close to camp, and then uh, probably call it a day once it starts getting pretty sogged in again, or if it starts raining too hard or anything, so. Yeah, part of that one down right there, too. We awoke the next morning to yet again another thick layer of fog. While we weren't going to waste the day, this definitely was putting a damper in our spirits and things were not looking up. And as you can see, we are completely fogged in. Um, we located a shooter goat yesterday. We know what hillside he's on. So we're just kind of waiting for, we're on a good glassing spot uh, to glass it whenever it finally clears up. So we're just kind of waiting for it to clear. Um, so hopefully we can locate him and make a move on him and get this whole thing done and over with. But for now, we're just wasting time until hopefully it eventually clears up. We took our rain gear off on the hike up wasn't the smartest decision. Um, so now everything that we have is soaked. Um, but yeah, we're gonna keep at it and try and keep some positive mental attitude to it. After several long hours of waiting, our efforts were rewarded. Within the last hour of light, the fog managed to lift. All right, folks, um, it's evening of the full second day. We haven't been able to see anything all day, but we managed to Pick up two goats up on this rim here. Um, I can't tell if they're billies or nannies or what. They're just way too far, but I two goats up there. We're gonna call it a day. Um, definitely keep this spot in the back of our mind, but I think we're gonna go after Big Honcho tomorrow. And then if that doesn't play out, the next day we'll run up into that area and try and pick something up. Alright folks, day three, clouds rolled out last night, finally got some clear skies to work with, should make glassing a whole lot easier. We're going to go ahead and head up on the hill and try and find old big honcho again and make a move on him. Wish us luck. We slowly worked our way up to the vantage point that we were going to glass from, and within seconds of getting there, we spotted a goat. You can see him with the bear eye right there. See him on the edge of that rock side? The first, the closest big rock side that goes all the way down? He's just on the right edge by those trees. Dude, he's in such a killable spot. I see him. Yeah, I see him. That is so sick.
I'm not shaking like a leaf. Let's go, Pam. Let's go, Pam. Oh, he's like, oh, kill this. Right there. He's dead right there. Dude! He's gonna hit this big rock down here and stop. Dude, let's just and go. There he is. Dude, I couldn't be happier. I'm shaking, dude. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Dude, that's awesome. Dude. That is so sick. Thank you so much for coming, dude. Dude, you got it, man. Oh, nice job. We're gonna go grab the packs, go get some service, take some pictures, send out some texts, and we're gonna get this guy cleaned and packed out. So we're gonna go ahead and get after it. While every moment of this hunt had been a grind, from the planning, to the scouting, to the several days of hunting before, it all suddenly seemed to pay off to be able to experience this. The fact that I was able to put my hands on an animal that most hunters never will and experience one of the toughest hunts that there is on the planet truly felt special and filled that drive inside of me to experience the unknown. Dude. And some tears. Oh, oh thank God. Hi. I got your text at noon when I was running up there trying to tell you there was a goat up on the hill. It was at 8.30. We oh, didn't even get a chance to sit down up there at the glassing point. Good job, buddy. Good job. Yeah. So with the hunt finally finished and accomplished, there was nothing left to do but soak it in. It is absolutely delicious. Goat heart right there. Whether it's the drive to see the unseen and experience the unknown, maybe it's the primal urge to do the same thing that my ancestors did, or I just use it as a good excuse to bond with my family and friends. Something about the wilderness just keeps me coming back. But no matter the reason, it's a hard thing for me to describe the urge to be up there chasing a mountain goat. This is an animal that most humans won't ever see, much less be able to harvest. They live in the toughest 
impossible conditions in North America. And to be able to get into their habitat and able to pursue them is truly special. Experiencing this with my uncle and my father and a very close friend is truly something unbelievable and almost unreal feeling. This trip in a hole and the entire experience is something that is truly unforgettable. That's it folks, made it back to the trailhead, getting ready to get packed up, go to ODF&W, check in this goat, then we're hitting the road and heading home. Once in a lifetime tag filled and genuinely could not ask for a better experience. We packed in, which was awesome. We had some amazing scenery, and but then the first couple of days of hunting, it looked real gloomy, real dark, and just was not looking good. And we actually started getting pretty worried that, you know, we may not even end up getting a goat, but the Lord provided, gave us a clear day, and we definitely capitalized on it. We had a goat dead pretty early in the morning, so we're going to go ahead and get packed up and call it a trip.